imagine if there was a recipe that combined progress and prosperity with health and the environment. I'd like to tell you more about this preparation and how we can cook up this dish. But to cook, you need a cook stove. And it's not just any regular cook stove I have in mind. I'm thinking of full-fledged development machine. Hold on to that thought. We'll get back to it in a bit. Across India, we mostly cook using gas stoves or chulas. There's been huge progress increasing LPG for home cooking. In fact, we now import 75,000 crores worth of LPG in a year. That's big money leaving India instead of helping our own development. On top of that, significant government subsidies underpin the LPG phenomena for home cooking in the country. The question is, is there a cheaper source, hopefully closer to home? For decades, we've known about biogas, which is gas that can be generated from agricultural waste and, and manure and things like that. This can reduce our import bills for LPG quite significantly. Promisingly, when one does the math, existing LPG subsidies can more than cover for the initial startup costs of biogas. So there's both viable technology and viable economics. Now, despite the pace of LPG expansion in India, 80% of rural India continues to use chulas. The health impacts of this are obviously severe. We need solutions that can reach large numbers fast. And these need to be in addition to, instead of, rather than LPG. As I said, biogas is not new. It's been around for decades and there have been multiple efforts around it, but it's never really taken off. There's an exciting partnership being led by NDDB, the National Dairy Development Board, that builds on learnings from the past, brings in technology and innovates on the business model. I'd like to tell you about it because I think it holds enormous potential because of the things that they're going to try and do differently this time round. Firstly, understanding that infrastructure alone is not enough. Biogas units need to be monitored to ensure that they're functioning fine. There have to be easy and affordable ways to repair them. And tracking is necessary to ensure that gas actually reaches families. The second is to think people. This effort is engineered around jobs. The program is built as a set of micro enterprises where mostly women can earn two to 4,000 rupees a month selling gas, servicing units. This is in addition to the jobs that will be created in constructing the actual units. I am increasingly convinced of the need to integrate jobs, especially for women, in all the work that is done. The multiplier effects of incomes for women are well established and are quite simply massive. In addition, the slurry that's generated can actually substitute for some of the fertilizer that's being used on farms. So as I said at the start, it's not just a biogas unit, it's a development engine. Now let's talk climate, but with a twist. These biogas units also reduce pollution, so families could actually get paid for the CO2 that they've reduced. Many airline passengers routinely and voluntarily pay a fee to offset the emissions from their flights. These are carbon credits, which is real money, 750 rupees per ton of carbon dioxide to be precise, that could be channeled to a family producing biogas. It's not just a biogas unit anymore, it's a platform unleashing market forces. There's even more benefits for families using biogas. There's evidence that children get better nutrition, babies get to play indoors without coughing or their eyes watering because of the smoke. It now takes seconds rather than minutes to start cooking, giving women folk that one thing money can't buy, time. It's not just a biogas unit anymore, it's almost a time machine. So this is what is possible now. Low carbon prosperity. Prosperity powered by low carbon, low carbon fueled by prosperity. I'd love to carry on this conversation with each of you on not just how we imagine it anymore, but how we actually realize it. Thank you.